Spilling the tea. This is the Rumor Report with Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. So Colin Kaepernick has an upcoming Netflix series, and they did unveil the trailer for this upcoming project. It's called Colin in Black and White. It's a six-part miniseries that follows his adolescent years. It's a coming-of-age story that appears to be centered on aspects of right, racial identity. You know, Colin Kaepernick did grow up as an, as an adopted biracial child in a white home. It's co-created by both Colin Kaepernick and Ava DuVernay. Here is the trailer. Since the day I was born, my passion my love was being a quarterback. But what you start out as is not necessarily what you become. While I was in high school, I felt a lot of different emotions. It turned out my competition wasn't only on the field. Growing up with white parents, I assumed their privilege was mine. I was in for a rude awakening. We going ultra black. What's up with Kaepernick? The hair, not acceptable. All right, so get ready for that. With the trailer being out right now, does that sound uh, engaging to you? I'll definitely check it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, the experience definitely does. You know, being a, a, a black man, you know, growing up with a white family, I mean, just that one line where he said, I thought that their privilege was mine, like, yeah, I'm interested to see what that experience was like. Mm -hmm. All right, now Summer Walker has revealed that her new album is going to close out with Sierra's Prayer. So... While uh, they didn't have all the tracks on the graphics right now for you to be able to see, she's releasing a song on Friday, X for a Reason, with JT from the City Girls. And then Sierra's Prayer will be also released at a later date, and it'll be narrated by Sierra. You know, a lot of people wanted to know the prayer that Sierra did to find her husband, to find Russell. So this should be pretty interesting. And I think it's a very clever and creative thing for her to put on her album. All right, now Nick Cannon was talking about uh, Fat Joe, and he was telling Fat Joe how instrumental that he was in squashing his beef with Eminem. Here was Nick Cannon on the Fat Joe show. You know, one day, hopefully, dude and I get an opportunity to sit down, because like I said, I do respect his ability, but if we no, speak- I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try, I'm not acting like I speak to Eminem or you every day. <laughs> I'm, Fat Joe's gonna try to be the mediator be the big man of this and try to get y'all together. I've been trying to get, I, I've talked to Roy's out of, we trying to really get it popping because I think at the end, two men need to have that conversation. Yeah, but I'm Joe Crack a little different from everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Crack. Well, looks like it all worked Joe out Crack, because man. here is what Nick Cannon has to say now, updated. Honestly, I got to keep it a stack. This brother right here helped in the beef with me and Eminem on his show. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't no real beef. But Joe was like, man, I got to get you brothers together, man. And he called and Eminem. And I called Eminem, too. Yeah. I, uh, and I said, this got to stop. I love Joe, man. I love mm -hmm. Joey Crack. Great How guy, you great not? person, man. It's just amazing to see Joey Crack squashing beefs. You know? Right? Is that, that's I mean, a term? Man, I mean, that, I'm just saying. That's a huge you term. Know, you can, you know, it's a lot of terror squad stories out there. But he's evolved. He's definitely evolved. He's evolved. Definitely evolved. All right, now Fat Joe was also on Rap City. We watched that before the BET Hip Hop Awards debuted. And... Tigger was asking him which modern rapper would he compare to Tupac. You know, everybody likes to say they're the new Tupac. Well, here's what Fat Joe had to say. All right, Joe, we're going to play a game right here on Rap City 2021. Uh, we have all these artists, right? And I want you to name the 2021 version of the artist that I give you. So I'll give you a name, mm -hmm. uh, a legend, and you tell me who's mm -hmm. the 2021 version of it. Man, I hope I could do this, but let's go. Okay. All right, uh, Tupac. I don't know, it's hard to be these guys. I mean, you asking me some crazy stuff, I would say the baby. All right, well, the baby did go ahead and, and post that clip on his Instagram page, and he said, agreed, but they're going to sort that down to crack, to crack. And so I guess... I mean, yeah, I saw a lot of people pushing back on that, but, I mean, here's the thing. I didn't under, I didn't hear why. What's the context? Like, I would mm -hmm. like to hear Fat Joe's reasoning. Fat Joe has been around a lot longer than me. You know what I mean? He actually knew Pac, if I'm not mistaken. So I would like to know what was his reasoning. Like, I can't just dismiss what Crack said. Yeah, some people are saying because Tupac was outspoken, didn't hold his tongue on any topic, and the baby is the same way. Maybe but what did Fat the... Joe say, though? I want to know why Fat Joe said that. I don't care what the people said. I want to know what Fat, why Fat Joe said that. That's what I would like to know. What uh, was his reasoning? Did he give a reasoning? Rap City cut it off right there. Like, boop. And nobody, <laughs> nobody, nobody bothered to go look at the full clip, huh? I, I, I don't know. I don't even know if, if Tigger asked him why. I'm sure Tig asked why. <laughs> All right. Now, Squid Game has surpassed Bridgerton for Netflix's top 
all-time series launch. 111 million views. Bridgerton, you need me. Bridgerton had got 82 million first month viewers. That was uh, the previous record. I mean, that blew that out the water. 111 million. Since when did, since when did, did, does Netflix put out numbers? Uh, they do sometimes. Every once in a while. Yeah. I know. They always yeah, talk they about always what do, their yeah. top no, rated shows are. No, they do not always do. Their top shows. That's they, how we know Bridgerton was the They, they yeah, do they not show. always do. Yes, they do. No, oh, they, are notori- they are notorious for no, not telling you what their numbers are. That's how we know Bridgerton are. was number one. Oh, they'll tell, they'll tell you what the most watched show was over a certain period of time. But won't give you its exact numbers. Yeah, they'll give you the numbers. Mm-hmm. I've they, never seen that before. That's how we knew that Bridgerton was their top rated show ever. They actually put out a whole report the other day. Remember Money like Heist was number 10. six or something like that? But mm-hmm. yeah, Bridgerton, you need me. I mean, I see you guys are falling off. Call me. I'm, I'm available. The new season, I'm sure, has already been filmed because oh. it's about to come out. But um, oh. Meek Mill posted, Squid Games, pay attention how fast people switch and kill each other to survive. Now think about the hood. Poverty is the exact same thing. If you just help them with work and money, they won't be that way. It's just a common sense message. So if you saw Squid Games, then you can relate to what Meek Mill is saying. Yeah, that must be a new Netflix policy because I'm looking at an article right now. Netflix executive explains why platform refuses to release ratings figures. And company it says company has remained enigmatic. That's the word? Enigmatic? enigmatic. About viewership. I think and that, that was from it's 2019, not, so this must be new. They just put this out like maybe like a couple of weeks ago because we reported it. But I also feel like it might not be ratings, but they just talk about what is the top ones, you know. So they might mm-hmm. not give you the whole entire. That's what I said. They'll tell you the top, but they won't but tell yeah. you the numbers. All right, now. Um, Smokey Robinson says he nearly died from COVID. He spent 11 days in a hospital in LA. And that was last December. He did an exclusive interview with DailyMail.com. He said he did not lose his ability to taste or smell, but the virus did threaten his vocal cords. Mm. And it left him unsure of whether or not he would ever be able to sing again. He said, I could barely even talk. Even when I got home, I was hoarse. I could not try to sing because I was afraid. I had to work on my vocal cords and get myself back together. He said he didn't know how he contracted it, but he thought something was wrong when he started feeling weird and funny. After coming in off the road, he was quarantining away from his family, a second COVID test then came back positive and then he was rushed to the hospital where his breathing started to decline he said he was so exhausted that four or five days of his stay are wiped from his memory so we're very thrilled that Smokey Robinson is, is okay I couldn't imagine how he would feel if he couldn't perform again I actually took my mom to go see Smokey Robinson perform at the Apollo and she was so excited and he's still a great performer to this day he really gets down and he be doing all this grinding and everything so Shout out to Smokey Robinson. Oh, salute to Smokey. We're glad that he's all right. Mm-hmm. Salute to my dude, Jason, from Tidal. He just uh, he, he just sent Fat Joe's tweet. I guess Fat Joe had tweeted, no one's Tupac, there's only one. But I was asked the question, and the baby's a super real one. He lives what he raps about. All so right. I guess that's his reason. And our producer said Tigger didn't uh, ask him why. He just said, uh, Tigger says, all right, all right, what about MC Hammer? What? <laughs> I guess the next artist that they're talking about. What? <laughs> salute all to right. Hammer. Well, that is your rumor report. All right. Thank you, Miss Yee. Remember he was saying what artist reminds you of an uh, uh, mm-hmm. you know, artist. So he was, I guess he was moving on to the next artist, which was MC Hammer. All right, but who are you giving your donkey to? Man, we need the Boynton Beach City Commission in Florida to come to the front of the congregation. We like to have a world with him. All right. We'll get to that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning.